let's go back. You are my healer. You are my restorer. My life giver. My sustainer. Hey. You are the living God. Oh. Is there no one like you? I don't know what God has done for you. But he has done great things for me. No man can do me like you do. No one can touch me like you do. Ha! No man can help me like you do. No one can help me like you do, Lord. You are the living God. Oh. And I know all that you do. You are the Lord. If that God is your Lord, let's check it again. Hey, you are the Lord. Hey, you are the Lord. Hey, you are the Lord.
until my voice re echoes. You are worthy of my worship, worthy of my praise. From my spirit to my soul, until my voice re echoes. You are worthy of my worship, worthy from my spirit. Okay. 
Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do. Only you, only you, only you, only you, only you, only you, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do. Say, Father, I thank you. I bless you. Begin to thank him. Father, I bless your holy name. I worship you. I give you the glory and the praise. You guys are not sounding like you made it to the month, the end of the month of July. You are not saying that you are excited that you had seen the last Sunday in the month of July. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. You don't need anybody to encourage you. Say, thank you. You don't need anybody to goad you, to, 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 to push you. It is time for you to say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless you. Father, I worship you. Father, I adore you. I glorify you. Father, I magnify you. Father, I give you the glory and the praise. I exalt you, Lord. I thank you. Begin to thank him. I bless your holy name. You are not thanking him enough. If I can't hear you, God can't hear you. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. Ascribe his name unto him. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. It's not a staring contest. You say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Get into the spirit. I bless you. I worship you. I exalt your holy name. I give you the glory and the praise. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. For protection. For sleeping and waking up. For going out and coming in. I say thank you for change of levels. I say thank you for the victories that you have fought on my behalf. I say thank you. Those I don't even know about that you have done for me. I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship you. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. You have 10 seconds to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. I have to, I'm changing the key. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent. Is that your story? Oh, Lord, you are. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent in my life. Oh, Lord, you have. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My help, oh, my. My help, oh, my. You are my help, oh. My healer, oh. There is something there. 
say thank you. We bless you. My helper. say thank you. We bless your holy name. For one more minute, say thank you, Jesus. I bless you, Lord. I worship you. I exalt you. You guys don't know what God has done for you. That's why you are looking. If you're in the hospital, you won't be like, acting like this. If you're in a wheelchair, you'll not be acting like this. If you're sick, you'll not be acting like this. If you're not here, you'll not be acting like this. If you lost someone, you'll not be acting like this. You don't know what God has done for you. Father, we say thank you. I bless your holy name. I worship you for the unforeseen battle that you have wrought on my behalf. I say thank you. I bless you in the midst of the congregation. Peace Assembly is saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you. We exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Angels are singing, you are worthy, oh, you are worthy, you, hey, angels are singing, you are worthy, oh, Lord, you are worthy, Ramana Koshanda, da, 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 angels are singing, you are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, oh you. Angels are singing. Ramana kosanda da 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 da. You are worthy. You are worthy. Shewu is singing. Thank you. Yes. Arana da 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 da. I am singing, oh, you are. Oluwa Shew is singing. You are worthy, oh, Lord. You are worthy, you are. I am singing. You are worthy, oh, Lord. You are worthy. What we are doing now is the most powerful prayer. You can do anything else. The most powerful prayer is the prayer of thanksgiving. If you thank God for what you have now, it can give you more. May God help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We worship you. We exalt your holy name. Let your name be lifted up and be glorified. Let your name be magnified. Thank you, Master. We worship you. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let your name be lifted up. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Hey, say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The God that has changed your level, say, thank you, Jesus. The God that will change your level, say, thank you, Jesus. The God that has made you whole, say, thank you, Jesus. The God that has given you children, say, thank you, Jesus. The God that has kept you, say, thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Say loud, amen. amen. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, I thought this would be our last prayer, 15, verse 21. Jeremiah 15, 21. He said, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem you or thee out of the hand of the terrible. May that be your portion and my portion in Jesus' name. Job 5, 12. Job chapter 5, verse 12. It says, He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot what? Yes. May the enemy be forever disappointed in you. They will not be appointed. They will be what? Disappointed. In the name of Jesus. The enemy will cry and cry over your behalf. 
they will not know what to do. Say, my father, my father, because I have come into today's service, send confusion to the camp of the enemy. Deliver me out of the snare of the foul land. The snare is broken and I'm escaped. My father, disappoint the hands of the crafty. My father, make diviners mad. Pray. I decree and declare from now on, by your power, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, from now on disappoint the tokens of liars all those that have encamped and held hands against me against my business against my family they will die in the name of Jesus no weapon formed against me shall prosper every tongue that rises against me in judgment I am speaking now I condemn you I curse you in Jesus name by the power of the Holy Ghost I redeem myself from the curse of man I redeem myself from every evil occurrence. I redeem myself and my generation from every evil pattern. In the name of Jesus, continue to disappoint the tokens of liars. Continue to make diviners mad. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you for delivering me and my family from the hands of the wicked. Father, I bless you. Father, I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I hear my spirit should pray against the spirit of almost. I almost got that job. I almost got that promotion. I almost got that marriage. Pray against what? The spirit of almost. I almost got that contract. We curse that spirit in Jesus' name. Like Moses, seeing the promises that are not entering. We curse that spirit in Jesus' name. Say, my father, my father. Every foul spirit resisting my forward progress. Die in Jesus' name. My father, my father. Every foul spirit, what are you doing now? Resisting my foul, my, my progress. Die in the name of Jesus. Every foul spirit, resisting my progress. Resisting my forward advancement. Die in the name of Jesus. Pray. My father, my father. I am da koshanda. Lika kakaka. We have 30 seconds to pray. Anything resisting my progress. The way you pray, the way God will answer. La kosakada. Mama koshanda. This year we move forward. This year we make progress. No stagnancy. I curse you. Makuta. La kosakada. Apapandada. La kwakoshanda. I make progress. In the name of Jesus. Forward movement. Upward movement. In the name of Jesus. La maanda. Lika sondaka. Mama mama. La kwakoshanda. In Jesus name we are prayed. I hear my spirit. Sorry sir. That we should pray for fresh fire. The enemy oppresses me because there's no fire there. How can the enemy come and oppress you and, you, and the enemy goes caught free? It's a lie. God has put angels around you to protect you. Say loud, amen. amen. Say loud, amen. amen. The enemy can't oppress you when you have fire. Say, my father, my father, I apply for more fire. Oh, and fire me, Lord. Pray. I apply for more fire. Fire in my bones, out of my belly, shall flow rivers of living fire. How can you oppress me? Are you okay? I curse you in Jesus' name. You foul spirit. You demon. You have no right to oppress in my life. Asaka kanda dada. La koshanda dada. Father, we thank you. Our Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We exalt your holy name. There is none like you. My God and my King, we worship you. Ancient of days, we adore your name. We have not come to seek man. We have come to seek you. We have come to worship the King of kings. We have come to worship the I am that I am. The lily of the valley, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That you do what no one can do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah, church. Praise the Lord. 
can we sit down? But before we do that, can you turn to your neighbor, left, right, and say, good morning, you look so beautiful. Remember, your word, your tongue, and your future. Make someone smile this morning with your words. Hallelujah. Daddy, you're not telling mommy. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So today's service is going to be different. We're going to be doing what we call um, a facilitation interactive session. We're going to have parents, children, and preteen come up stage to form the panel. And then before that, we want you to watch a video that is going to lead into the session. We will talk about it. We will have questions and discussion. For some of us that always miss Wednesday service, please, I'm begging you. I'm using the opportunity to beg you. Come for Bible study. That is the time where you ask questions that nobody will judge you. We are all not, you know, in that SS3 or high level of the Bible. So when you come for Bible study, you have the opportunity to ask questions. You have the opportunity to seek clarifications on things that you don't understand. So, but today we're going to use the opportunity again to give you that um, chance to ask questions around the word of your tongue, your, sorry, your word, your tongue, and your future. Hallelujah. But we are going to be coming from the perspective of secular movies, secular music, and cartoons. So when you watch this, the panel will come up and then we'll ask questions and the audience can also ask questions. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media, please. Those written off or wonders. No, he doesn't push us into 
feel, but he has a way of turning the filler into the molas. Of killing the gold and chasing our debts. We could never ask each other. But it's only if we let him. Can ever imagine. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now from what we just watched, everyone came to preach to her. But did you see the attitude of those people until she met that one that represented Jesus? Yes, we go out for evangelism. Yes, we share the words of the Lord with our mouth. But how do we show love? How do we bring this out? How do we say the words that we say? Luke chapter 6 verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Now I'm going to take you through your word, your tongue, and then your future. Your words in the Bible, words are seen as powerful tools that can either build you or tear you up. For that lady, the word was either building her or what? Tearing her up. We saw the beginning where the, the word has tear, it tore her into pieces. And then God came in his own way through his child, through someone who was representing him to build her up, to tell her that she can do it. It is not difficult. I don't know what any one of you is going through. I don't know the challenges that you have in your heart right now. I don't know what you're going through, your job, your career, your immigration, whatever, your family, your marriages, the, the choice to have children. Please use your words. Use the word of God. Prophesy to yourself and to your heart. Hallelujah. Christians are encouraged to speak the word of God of, of encouragement, truth, love. Avoid using your mouth to gossip. Avoid using your mouth to say the things that are negative to yourself and to your surroundings. Now for your tongue. The tongue is often associated with the power of influence and challenge of controlling it. James 3 verse 5 to 6 compares the tongue to a small spark that can either set a whole forest off on fire or allow that forest to grow green trees. So the words that comes out of our tongue can either set the whole of America on fire. Let me take you back to the day that they swore in our president, Tinubu, in Nigeria. He said one word, and from that day, there was chaos in the country. What did he say? We are going to remove what? What did he say? What happened in the next two minutes? What happened? There was chaos in the whole country. It took us almost one week to get four. That's what your word can do. It can destabilize a forest. The next one is your future. The future in the Bible is often seen in light of God's sovereignty and promise. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6. It encourages us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Promising that he would direct your path. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, speak of God's plan for us and plans to prosper us and give us hope. Stop having any kind of headache or heart ache for your future. You cannot determine your tomorrow. You cannot. You have to learn to trust God with your future. Learn to say the word of truth and the word of favor over your life. Stop thinking, what are we going to eat tomorrow? What is going to happen? I remember talking to my husband about something for next year. And he told me, are you planning for next year from now? I said, yes, it's just, I said, no, 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 don't give yourself a headache. And it's the truth. Yes, you can plan. You know, I want to save this. I want to have this. But those things should be positive. It should not be, how are we going to do this? Don't bother about the how. Bother about what you want to do. And let God handle the how. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
At this moment, I'm going to invite my co-moderator today, and I also want to use the opportunity to say thank you so much, Pastor, for allowing us to do this. God bless you, sir. Amen. So, Sister Lara, Praise thank the you. Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. So, right now, we're going to call the panel. Um, we're going to involve, like she said, the, the kids, the preteen, the teenagers. We have questions for them, and we have our daddies and mommies that will also be responding. So, it's my pleasure to first call Rema. Rema, please, I want you to clap your hands as they come on stage. Please put your hands together for them. Alana, Alana Adams, please clap, encourage them, please. John Tekobo, John Tekobo. We have Pastor Nido. Please clap for them. Sister Imade. Sister Imade, please join us. Please clap for them now. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then our dear beloved pastor, Pastor Chris. Please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have questions um, that we'd like to ask. Um, just like Sister Clara mentioned. Um, the main question that I'll be asking today is what shapes your thoughts, your words, and your future? So Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for heart of it are the issues of life. Our focus today is about things or what we feed our eyes that shapes our thoughts. So the question, the main question for the day is, should Christians watch secular movies, cartoons, and listen to secular music? How does this affect your tongue and the words we speak? So I'm going to break it down to different types, to different contexts. So you know while growing up, when we watch action movies, for kids, right, it kind of gives you ginger. You are charged up. Then you, after you're done watching it, you go to the kitchen. You understand? You know when you watch Kung Fu, like when you watch Kung Fu, you go to the kitchen. I think for the kids, they go to, the, they go to anywhere and they are practicing. They are trying to do the same thing they've seen on the, t on the TV. For superhero movies, you get superpowers, super abilities. And sometimes you sit, you, you ask yourself that if you can do the same thing, Spider-Man did, if I can just jump and fly, those things shapes our thoughts as we grow up. Also, local news. When we watch local news, there's, there's depression everywhere. There's bad news everywhere. You know, there, <laughs> I have someone who is very close to me that the only thing she feeds on is CNN. And when she watches it, she's just always in a bad mood. She's just always, because of the things that she has seen and the things that she fed her eyes with. Horror movies. Let's go to Halloween. During or when you watch horror movies, you can't even sleep at night. I don't know if you're making sense. If I'm making sense, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> I know some people will say, ah, no, it doesn't matter. We watch horror, we'll still sleep. No. Different types of dreams. So we want to ask the kids. We have questions for them. Educational movies as well. You watch documentaries. It tells you about the history or what has happened before. Also, Christian movies, they are edifying. So where we are going tonight, this, this morning, I'm going to start with Rema. Um, so the first question for you is, why would you prefer to watch a secular movie? So let me explain what a secular movie. A secular movie in a layman's term is a movie that is not Christian movie. I don't know if that makes sense. It's not, it has, it's, you're just watching it for the fun, fun of it. So why do, you, why do kids of your age prefer to watch such movies? So um, you asked why do we watch those movies? The reason is because they have interesting stories. They have so most of the things that we watch they have interesting storylines, so we like things that have that are interesting storylines. And another thing is the visual and effects. Like, if for me, especially for me and the people in my school, especially, we love watching anime. The reason why that is is because it has a lot of these cool storylines, plots, and they have all these powers, and we wish we could have them, and then we just get to talk about what they do and who's stronger and stuff like that. So 
Okay, thank you. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you. So mothers and fathers, I'm sure you're, you're learning from why they watch these things, right? So Rema, another question for you. Thank you for telling me that, you know, you like to watch the animate and you wish you could do those things. Have that been an effect? What I mean effect is the impact of these things that you watch in your life. Have there been a situation where you finish watching something and then you ask the thing or you say the words that you saw in what you watched? Um, not really for me when I, when I watch things, I really don't, I don't like to impersonate them because I'm my own self, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but some, but as I've seen from some of my fellow students in school, some of them do like to act like them. Some people at recess, especially, they like to run and do this thing called a role play. So that's what happens sometimes. Thank you. God bless you, Rema. Thank you. Put time, we give him another round of applause. Now the next is to Alana. Can you answer the same question? What are your favorite movies and how do you relate to them? What's a good question about my son? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, what's a good question about me? And that's just for nostalgia and whatnot. So, but I don't think. Wait, can you repeat that question? How does has it in impacted your life? Um, some of the movies sometimes they have like a, a message behind it. So sometimes it will in a positive way. So do you find yourself, for example, there's a new thing on the social media now. They call it steez or roasted. Do you find yourself saying those words as a Christian? No. So when you watch these movies, you don't find yourself maybe repeating the words or using the words in your daily life? No, that was like 10 years ago. 10 years ago. It happened 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please can we give her a round of applause also. So what we are trying to bring out here is for you to see the effect of some of these things that our kids watch. Not just watch. Listen to. Listen to. Why we say that? I'm going to use, I just, for some reason, baby, please forgive me for this one. I'm going to use my husband as an example again. If he's around me, I play Christian music a lot from my phone, gospel music. He finds himself singing it, you know, if he's, um, you know, I never see this kind God before, just as he's doing what he's doing, because my phone is playing, so he's listening and he's saying it. But sometimes when I'm not around, or maybe when he's with his phone, for some reason he will go and hear this, um, go, 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 go. you know this one that's running now. Uh -huh. He will be playing the ones that his phone can bring out. He will not intentionally play Christian songs. Sometimes. Sometimes he can, sometimes he does not. But being intentional about what our kids watch, what they listen to, what they hear, what they use their eyes to see is very critical. I'm happy that we have awesome kids in this church that can tell us that it doesn't affect them. They don't do it. But Rema said something that in his school, he sees some people doing a role play. So imagine you're not cautious of what your children are watching. Imagine them doing role play of things they are not supposed to see or say the words that they are not supposed to hear. So we have work to do as parents to make sure that we censor those things. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to go to the adult. Sister Lara, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Farah. So I'm going to start with Sister Imadi. Um, Shelly, for um, people that have kids and they are able to train, um, you know, when you see your kids, sometimes, okay, let me just use myself as an example. There are times as um, a new parent, you have things that you want to do. But the kids, they want to watch TV at the same time. From the bottom of your heart, you don't want them to watch TV. But because you don't want stress, you just say, go watch it. Go watch it. How do you manage situations like that? As a parent, how have you been able to do that? Um, maybe yourself or your kids, or how have you been able to manage the things that your kids do watch? Praise the Lord. Um, as a parent, is 
like they say, is, is, uh, there is no timetable or uh, there's no um, the timetable on how to break up a kid, you know, but you just have to be disciplined. Like my child, I'll always very, very careful of the things she, she watch. Like, actually, I actually stop watching movies. People, like people talk about movies, I really don't know what story is because I love watching movies ever since the day I give back to her. I watch, I mind the kind of movies I watch. And uh, I make sure she, she watch kids' movies that are educative, that, um, that talks about Christ or Christian movies, kind of, you know. So um, for, for music, like she knows almost all the Christian music. Because when I'm dropping her off schools, I play Christian music, you know. So I always make sure I do that because of her. So I make sure I do things that she learned from. That she will understand because at that age, they have to like understand what the Bible. Like she have a Bible, I read Bible to her and also. And I just, I think, I think I lost myself in the things I like, just to satisfy her, so she understand what it means for to, to understand what Christ is about. I think I should just use that word. I lost most of my interesting things, movies. I love to watch movies before, but when I get back to her, I just cut off. I think maybe after work, when she's asleep, I can just sometimes watch my movie when she's not awake. I think that's how I do. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to go to, thank you, Sister Imadi. Um, You know, the things that we sacrifice just because of our, because of our kids, we want to make sure that they are in tune with faith. So I'm going to go to Pastor Nido. I know you have grown-up teenagers, right, that there's no way for you to even manage or censor what they are watching. Um, and I know that social media is accessible. I know that for YouTube, you can always manage settings, right, to, to filter the things your kids, the kids watch. But for daddy that have grown up kids, um, how do you, <laughs> how do you, okay, let me say, how do you differentiate between what they are watching that is a defined? How do you know? How do you even track? Is there a way for you to even see what they are doing? don't know how to start here, but then um, when you say how to to answer your question directly, how to monitor what the children watch. Uh, I listened to my sister here uh, just now, and um, I'd like to follow up on what she said. That uh, right from when I married and started having children, uh, my I started. I came to that point where I realized that. Um, as a parent, I am now accountable for some other lives. And uh, the things that used to interest me, you know, kind of started to change. Because uh, I have this uh, battle in my house that I, I always say that it is not what you tell the children that instructs them and directs them. What most, more often times is what you do that they see. Uh, you can't be watching uh, home, movie, home videos or whatever content it is and taking time even when you're supposed to be doing other things and expect that uh, your children will not follow suit and copy. Uh, maybe I like, to di I like to digress a little. Uh, the eyes, for all of us to understand, for me, the eyes is like uh, the the most direct gateway to the heart. What we see feeds our hearts instantly. Because it just, it just downloads the information into our hearts and it shapes our hearts a lot. So movies and music, music on its own has uh, a way of doing it. Music is the things you hear. And music is even better influencing your heart than the words you hear. Because music comes with the rhythm and it's the sweetness to it. But then you ask yourself, what is, the, what is the message that the music is communicating? What is the message that the movies are communicating? 
Uh, back to how I handle my children. I, I, can't, I can't claim to be an expert on these matters. It is the grace of God. I, I, I said that uh, I came to a point where I realized that uh, I'm now responsible for other lives and I need to change the things that I used to do. And luckily, I, changed, I started changing the things that I used to do uh, from even before I married. So I, 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 I started to chart a new path for my life before uh, I married. And so I left the things that uh, were not uh, very, very, very... Um, uh, we cannot be too proud of. I've left a few, quite, quite a number of them before I married and started to have children. So, uh, but then I tell you, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't easy. Because even now, there are times when I wonder that uh, my children, even the, the grown ones, know people like Davido. I wonder where they know them from. <laughs> you know, that they even know them by name. And they can even sing some of their songs. So it's, it's a surprise, you know, that you think you have done all the best you could, try to make your house only, only radiate things of God that you want the children to imbibe. But then you, you come to know that your children know that we do, they know what are some of those other names, and they can sing some of their songs. You know? But the question is, what, is, what are those songs feeding their hearts? And what are those movies that you watch feeding the hearts of our children? I think the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I don't know if I answered the Thank question. Thank you so much. Please, can we give him a round of applause? And also to Sister Imadi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, at any point, if you have a question, please, you can write it on a note, and then we will collect it, and then we'll read. Or you specify if you want to express yourself. And this is an interactive session, so we want to hear it also from the church. Hallelujah. So now to you, Pastor John Tekobo. <laughs> hallelujah in the making hallelujah so we want you to describe or try to explain your experience while growing up we know you're still growing but you know while really growing up as a pastor's son how were they able and how did you see the way they regulated your access to music to movies and to whatever social media and the rest of it thank you Thank you. Over to you. Please. Okay. Um, there's a thing I want to say as well um, for the kids and also the parents as we are. Like John mentioned that there was a time that they had to back off. Mm -hmm. And I think that at that point, probably they found or they've said, oh, he has found himself. Because there are times as parents, we have to back off and let the children find themselves. Um, it's not really about shouting. It's about the grace of God praying interceding for them. I just wanted to throw that out that growing up, even as a pastor's son, it's, it's not as easy as everybody thinks. Because everybody believes that pastor's children, they have to be perfect. They, have to, they are just human beings like, the, like us. Um, I'm going to go to Pastor Chris. Um, Pastor Chris, I just want you to please help us with your experience growing up. The things that you saw, the things that you watched, the things that had impact and still impacting your life up to this moment. It could be your environment, it could be while your family. What are the things that shaped your thoughts? And you got to a point, you met Christ, and you know that this is the right path you want to go forward. Born at the born again time, you never did wrong. You lived a 
started my, my this call um, went to school and everything. The lives have been perfect. The mind was not like that. I grew up as a very um, troubled child. I got to a stage that my, my people didn't really believe that anything would come out. Anything good would come out of me. They didn't believe that I would finish school. I got into trouble in school. I, it was a very rough path, very tough and rough path. And I was influenced by friends um, I wanted to be along. I wanted to be, feel among, um, watch all kinds of things. And these things actually have um, great uh, difference. In those days, we used to have two pack. We used to have um, um, big, big daddy. What's his name again? You know, we could rap all kinds of songs and do all kinds of things. And um, it's very important for me because of the path that I came through and where I'm coming from. So when I see somebody who is struggling, I have great hope in that person that that person will turn to something good. Um, most of you had parents who probably were Christians. Uh, my parents both were Catholics. Uh, my mom was serious. My dad was also a church person. So I didn't have anybody that would like, you know, direct me to the right path and all that. But along the way, I always have love for God and always made um, promises to God. God, if you allow me to get admission to certain school, I will do this for you. If you allow me to pass my exam, I will do this for you. If you allow me to pass my OS, I will do this for you. And one day, God reminded me of all the promises <laughs> I have made it to me. And he said, this is the time uh, I needed to you know, become so. And I discovered that the things that others used to do, and they would get away with it. If I tried, I'd get into trouble. So I discovered that this thing was not working for me. Um, that path wasn't, I wasn't progressing. I got to a stage where friends were getting to university and I was still struggling with that and all that. And I won't be a bright student. In those days, when it was difficult to get into schools from primary five, as far as in the 80s, I, I did it easily and all that. But along the way, I always, but when I'm talking about um, the influence of television and radio, they are, they, they actually um, influence you. Those days when Superman used to reign, when you watch Superman, the next thing I'll go and get wrapped and, and tie it to my leg. I'll begin to run around the compound, hoping that to fly. I'll climb the fence with my wrapper and try and jump if I will fly or something. And um, we used to watch Chinese films where one person will kill like 100 persons. So I will put um, firewood. I will stand them behind our compound and pretend as if I'm walking through the back and I'll leave like 50 people and say, who are you? I begin to fight them and I'll fall all the sticks. So what am I saying is that um, these songs and these um, mov um, um, movies actually influence you. And they may not influence you now if you keep on watching them. The Bible said evil communication corrupts good manners. And if you keep on doing them, you'll be shocked a day will come, the things you will do because you're already planting that seed and planting that seed and planting that seed. And eventually, it will bear fruit. That is why, as um, even as a minister, I got a um, smartphone very late. Most people, many people got smartphone um, early, but I, I, I got it late. Why? Because the first time I tried to get a smartphone, I discovered that um, I was always fixated on it. And you just want to spend like 10 minutes and check something. You have to spend two hours, three hours. Even the thing you say you want to go and check, you need to go check it. You expect four hours. Uh, I've seen people who wanted to just check something in their phone around 10 o'clock in the morning, and it is 4 a.m., and they are still on that phone. They have not slept. So I discovered that the rate of my visions, because one way God ministers to me is he gives me visions. I discovered that my visions were reducing. I couldn't see visions. So um, I stopped it for a while. When I stopped it for a while, the visions came back again. So I discovered that it actually affected my relationship with God, the time I was spending with the Bible and all that. So until the, I got to the point where I could actually control myself as regards to using the phone. And just to prove that the Spirit of God is one, recently a message I posted online 
was technology and our faith. How we should use technology when it's necessary because you can't, today, without technology, you can't do medicine, you can't do so many things now. But we must know the limitation as regard our work with God. So um, growing up for me, it actually affected me in a negative way in, in the beginning. But when, as I grew in maturity in my work with God, I was able to understand and draw the line. And by the grace of God, I've taken um, charge over myself that um, um, technology or the kind of things I hear do not influence in me anymore by the grace of God. Thank you very much. Sophie. Can you give him a round of applause? So we have a question from the audience. Ma, um, you indicate that you have a question? Thank you. But um, you still go out there and you, 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 it's not the Bible that is taught there. You see different things, mm. different families. And um, you get influenced by some of the things out there. And uh, I think what actually really works for a child is to be humility and say yes. And, and you have to learn how to say because no child is the same. They are all different. You need to know how to get access to each one of them. Also, the children just work with you. So when children are here, they are just there. I mean, they may not say it, but they are watching you and they are emulating you. Also, I got um, into this therapy, which I did. And after I did the therapy, I have no doubt some my son is going through that therapy right now. Because that therapy helped uh, me to identify myself as a person better. Because that way, the child is able to decipher when they see things, what is right and what is wrong. So, I mean, I, I, I just felt that that helped, will help him to make right choices. Um, so, um, it's not just uh, because they see other things besides the Bible outside. And they, able, they need to be able to know that, okay, this thing is even mm -hmm. true or not. So, I had to help him with that. So that he can make right choices for his life. Thank you very much, Ma. God bless you. So we have uh, the last question. I'll go around. We have another comment. Okay, we have a lot of comments now. <laughs> okay. Question. Yes, sir. Um, on the seven days, in the advert of on Tuesday, the Muslim clergy who met to Mecca mm -hmm. to discuss what he said to the children out in the country. Okay. They came to the conclusion that they will allow, instead of banning the TV, they will allow the purpose to watch the TV. Because by banning it, they will not be able to counter it. Right? Okay, now. If we should say that our kids should watch and listen to only biblical stuff, knowing that they spend more time out there than inside, wouldn't that be making them to be dumb, deaf, and blind because the society must still influence them? I like what Alena and the young guy said. They can watch this and supervise, but it's all about them, what they think about, about it. What do you say to that? Thank you very much. We, are you answering the question? Or, okay, he's answering the question. Okay, so praise the Lord. TG, the, is he answering the question? Are you answering the question, Pastor Brian? Okay, we have someone who wants to answer the question. Then we can take another question. Praise the Lord. I think, uh, first of all, uh, we should use uh, Proverbs 22 as our watchword. Train up our child in the way we want so that when he grows up, he will not depart from it. Uh, I will, let me use myself as a practical example. When I was growing up, I would say, I exposed to a lot of danger, you know? And by that 
kind of exposure has built me to recognize uh, danger when I see it. So there is no way we can isolate uh, press, you know, the, the children of the world of today from technology because the life is about generation. So you can't stop them from that. But you can program their, their mind, you know, when they see danger, to then make, make them run away from it. Let them not be caused and effect to listen to. So that when, uh, that's why I said I'll use myself as an example. Uh, in a Greek, they call something battery, uh, battery cage system and free range system. So most of the kids we have here, they don't expect, uh, expose to danger. Everything they need, they have them at pleasure. Are you getting it? So in a, bat a battery cage system, that's what we call a Greek. If you go to a poultry, you see everything that uh, uh, um, chicken, everything they need, you have to give them. Your failure to give them at that point in time, it is 12 noon, they need to eat if you don't give them, even though if they are layers, you still them part, you know, eating their egg. So, and you see the free range, the local birds, are you getting it? When they see hawk, they know where to go. Are you getting it? But leave this one from cage. Let hawk, eagle, and all those them come. They don't know. So, we have to, you know, prepare their mind. You know, one, one thing I do, you know, that I really do in my home is I watch most of this lock up, lock up America. You see those people in jail or something like that. I call them, come and watch it. Because statistic has proven that <laughs> larger percentage of kids, you know, let, let me say the black, they are, you know, incarceration. Are you getting it? So when the kids see it, okay, you see, let them see the story behind it. You know, by then you are preparing them. Are you getting it? Then you com complement it with the word of God. So those two, because there is no way whether we we have seen some series of news, we, we had it, even pastor kids, everything you see. The, the time I was li uh, listening to news, you know, uh, Pastor Crawford Dollar, mm. his daughter. Did you see what he, she did? Mm. You know, all these things is, if we don't balance it, you know, it's, we have to make sure that we prepare their mind with the word of God and make sure that they know the danger. Mm. Because we are shielding them away from danger here in the U.S. So back home, we learn it. So we go places and, and our parents, they are comfortable. You are in the present, here in America, let me say that, we are not even comfortable with our neighbor. Are you getting it? Because of the danger. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. And the law itself doesn't take, you know, the law, whatever, all these kids, if they made the mistake here, you can make thousands of mistakes back home in Africa. It will not affect your life. But they, we can't, they can't afford to make your single mistake. It's going to be on their record for life. So because of that, so let us prepare them, their mindset so that when, see, uh, when they see dangers, so they run away from it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, according to what um, Pastor Effie said, that he chose his path, regardless of the fact that the mother was a Catholic and the father was neither here nor there. Um, Paraventure, you have a situation whereby you take your child to the church. The parents, is, the parents are Christians. And you teach the child the way of the Lord. You uh, try to go for a therapy or other alternative. And that child is still not yielding. At that point, I know we have set in prayers. We have gone for therapy. At that point, what do you do? Thank you. Thank Lydia, you. Lydia, help That's us with question. Mike. We have... Please, we want a response to the a question before we go question. to the next. We have just about 10 minutes. And I think I will also call mommy to add to Thank something. You. Yeah. I just want to suggest that as a mother, you don't have a choice but to continue praying. But 
is nothing prayer cannot do. I want to say that I have gone through stages of life with my children. As parents, we need to have an intentional plan to stay with those children. When they were children, when they were watching cartoon, I always preach to them. In fact, there was a day, I, I have boys, they are all boys. There was a day my preteen boys tried to practice this um, Spider-Man, whatever. And they pulled down the ceiling fan <laughs> upon themselves. In fact, that day I was shaking. I told them, don't worry, your father will come for you. <laughs> I, just, I just locked the door. But when they are watching cartoon, I now took it upon myself to sit with them. When they are watching, I keep on, I kept quiet. When they finish that cartoon, I will ask them, what did you bring from this cartoon? Tell me what exactly you have learned. Do you see what happened to that guy when he did what he did? And they will tell me whatever they learned. If it's good, I will tell them. If it's bad, I will tell them this one. And that was how we started. Then I love watching uh, romantic movies, crime movies. And at the end of the day, I saw that at times when I'm watching the crime movies, the small ones, they will be quiet. They will be covering their faces. And I said, oh, stop, stop watching. And when they are watching their own cartoon too that are terrible, I will ask them, but why do you like this cartoon? If you cannot but close your eyes when you get to some part, meaning that that cartoon is not meant for you. Then at times when they are doing something, I draw their attention to what the Bible has to say concerning what they have just watched. And by so doing, I saw that they are learning. But when my boys were growing up and they are now in the body now, they come back home with some attitude that I don't know from where they gain all those knowledge from. And I had to call them back to tell them this is not a Christian attitude. Why? Where did you see it from? If you are in Rome, you behave like Romans. If you behave that way in your school, now you are at home. Please come back home. I made them to realize that there is a identity crisis in their life because this faith you have, you are now going to school, you are now saying you want to identify with the world. But remember, the Bible says you are of the world. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. So for the fact that you are in the world doesn't mean you should behave like one of them. Then when I saw that each time I talk to them, they still come back with some other character. I had to go to the Lord in prayer. Every time I had to pray for them, Lord, they are going to school. Even though they are going to the world, you are the only one that can go ahead of them. Go with them. Help me with them so that they won't come back home with attitude that is not of yours. When they are when they are in the midst of their friends, help them to be able to make the right decision at all times. And I could see that the prayer was uh, working. So prayer works. Thank you. Pr praise the Lord. I just um, just to add to what uh, Mommy has said, and I just want to, um, I just have a perspective to share. I feel like sometimes as parents and guardians, we like what we've been talking about this morning, trying to put structures in place and prayer, they are very important. But I also feel like we need to have the right perspective in terms of we want our children to fear God, not to fear us. And I think that's one mistake that, a mistake that we make in the sense that sometimes when we do all the efforts, when they go out there, you are not there with them. It's, so you want a child that does things because they have the fear of God, not because they have the fear of you. Because um, as an adult, now my mother is saying, but I can do what I want to do because I'm, I'm an adult. So if I, I don't have the fear of God, my mother cannot influence, may not be able to influence me again. So I think we, in everything we are doing, prayer, relationship with our children, everything, we want to make sure that, ah, my child is beginning to respond to God, not necessarily to me. Because they, like I said, they will become adults, they will leave the house, they will have friends. So I just want us to make sure that we are helping our children build a genuine relationship with God and not necessarily be scared of us and don't do things because we are here. Because children of nowadays, they are ten times smarter than their parents, and it's true. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, can we give him a round of applause? Yes, I actually like that perspective. Works. Thank you very much. One more response, and then we'll give it to Pastor, oh. Mrs. 
five more minutes. So okay. everyone should please take one minute because we want to hear from Sister Dusala. Yes, so um, I guess from a different perspective as well, um, relating it to myself and how I was as a child from um, high school to college to now as an adult. Yes, when I was younger, I'd watch certain things and everything, but I still remember the things that my parents taught me. Um, what people need to realize that television is planting seeds of whatever the, um, whoever orchestrated whatever they're trying to convey to the child, different waves and frequencies that we see, that we hear. What I find myself doing now is actually reading, yes, the word of God, planting seeds in my heart, but also reading Christian books. I find myself not being on Netflix or social media, and I'm finding myself because I have that hunger to know more. The Bible says that God makes everything beautiful in his time. So as your parents are praying for you, as you're praying for your child and so on and so forth, one day that seed will sprout, and then they'll wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to put this down and pick this up. Thank you. Thank you. I'm having uh, some few questions. What is a secular song? What is a Christian song? What is a spiritual song? The second question, is it the third or the fourth question, is the Bible say in Proverbs chapter 3, 27, verse 38, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in their power to give them. Verse 28 say, say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again tomorrow. My question is, why do we see people come to church with faith? Don't say it's not faith. A man will not leave his house and come to church and say he does not have faith. Why do people come to church and they are seriously sick in their spirit in their souls, in their bodies, and there is no solution. And the third fourth question is, why do children of the darkness are more powerful than the children of God? Praise the Lord. A you want to respond to the three Amen. questions? Okay. That, that was the professorial uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. dissertation. Yes. Uh, those to put everything, secular song, the inspiration is from the enemy. Spiritual songs, uh, the inspiration is from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There are some Christian songs that sound Christian. I mean, there are some secular songs that sound Christian. Mm -hmm. Those look at the inspiration. It's from God, it's a Christian song or a spiritual song. It's from the enemy, from the devil. And of course, the movement, if, if the secular song moves you to do things that are secular, sexual, things like that, you know, is what? The enemy. If the other song moves you to spend time with God, opens the vista of the heavens over your life, that's a spiritual song. The other ones, why do people come? Maybe I'll let mommy and daddy answer that one. I think it's the state of your heart. Amen. Okay, you want to respond? Oh, okay. Sorry. 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 I, I just wanted to add briefly uh, to follow up on uh, that uh, Bible scripture that uh, our brother quoted there. Uh, when it says, uh, train the child on the way it should go. And if he's grown, he will not depart away from it. The question we ask is, who is doing the training? As adults, do we assume that we are already we know everything, and so we train our children the way they should go? I don't think so. We should also, as adults, remember that we don't have we don't have it all. We need we need also to be trained. I think our, our daddy here will know uh, they they call they call train the trainer. We need to be training ourselves so that we can train the children. And as a matter of fact, it's not us that is training. Is the grace of God. And to follow up on what my sister said there, we pray for these children. Praying for the children is not when. It shouldn't be when, only when you think that they are deviating. Praying for the children should be a regular thing. As a matter of fact, one of my pastors once tell, told me that uh, praying for the children is a daily thing. It takes a child a, child a day. And they sit down and pray for the child, one child a day. He has four children, four days of the week. He keeps praying for them. And so it's a regular thing, right from when they're born till adult, even till when they, get, when they go to marry and all of that. So you train yourself. Don't believe that you know it all as adults. We need to also be training ourselves and feeding ourselves with the word. And then 
Training, uh, praying for the children is a regular thing, not a one-off thing. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, well, my name is Nicholas, for those that don't know my name. But I, I came across something this week, and it was from Genesis 3, 17 and 22. 17 says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, and in toil you shall eat of it and all the days of your life. And in verse 22 he says, Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to no good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Those are the two parts of the things. And the third one here is, he sent love to us through Jesus Christ. But because of the knowledge of good and evil, the way he sent Jesus Christ was through a virgin Mary because he wants to relate with this flesh. But sent his true virgin Mary, which he came out without any relationship between the husband and the wife in the, in the physical world. And the fourth one I'm going to relate to this is from the song that we listen to. It says, the air that we breathe is the word of God. So to anyone and any creature, from the medical terms, they all, we all breathe air, oxygen or whatever to live. It means there's a lifeline that we still all have, whether we're in sin or we're in the good side, that the Lord will use to reach every one of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So um, I'm, my, I'm still going back to how we watch our kids and all that, on what they watch and see. So let's even deviate from TV. We are in America. They show them a lot of stuff in school. They teach them a lot of things in school that is not even biblical. I don't want to go into, into what they teach them now in school to even celebrate in school. So in my own case, even, okay, I, I don't want to take much of a time, sorry. I grew up, my parents were initially not born again. But thank God for my grandma. She takes me to church. And you know, Baptists, they have like program that you have to follow. Some beam, this, this, that, that, that. So the word of God that they were putting in my head then, the church, helped me when I was trying to find myself. I preached to my parents at the time. And when my mom even became a Christian, she became this hard don't do this, don't do that. So I was now living under law, no more. It was just the fear of her, not following the word of God. I told myself that I don't want my kids to be like that. The, late, the day my daughter lied to me, I went to my bedroom, I cried. I said, God, am I doing something wrong? That's where the place of prayer comes in. And I prayed to God, I said, please help me. I cannot do this myself. We cannot do it by ourselves. We, I, I, okay, please, you can control a little bit. Put your children on your iCloud if they have your, if you have, you cannot control. I work. When I go out, will I see what they are watching? It's only through my iCloud that I can see those things. God bless us in Jesus. Final contribution, Ma, before. Um, God will be with, God will bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Concerning the movies or whatever the children are watching, um, I want to talk about watching Christian movies. There are some Christian movies too that um, maybe in the course of trying to let us understand what is maybe what the world is all about. Like when I was um, when I was raising my children. There was this thing that we watched together. Up till now, they will still um, Mount Zion movie. So they will be, they will still be singing the song "Le Shuto Bagbe Mi." That is uh, just a little mistake, uh, just a little sin. So all I'm saying is, like uh, captives of the mighty, all those ones, they will do Orisha, Mogmo, all those ones. By watching all those, all those movies, I think the Orisha Mogmo. All this stuff and the kind of, 
the kids too might pick something from all those movies too, but it is also a Christian movie. And at the same time, buying smartphone for our children, it is something that we, we parents, we should stop because when you are not there, no matter how you censor it, these kids, they are more intelligent than the parents. When you say, okay, I want my children to be talking to me while I'm all, when I'm not at home, I want to see what he or she is doing. You don't know when you are there or when you are not there what they are doing on that phone. Please, I'm begging the parents to, please, you can buy a little phone for them, not the smartphone because we have smart kids. Maybe then, mommy, when they bring back a Nokia 3310. <laughs> Mommy, over to you, ma. <laughs> Lord, well, I believe that our sister asked a very uh, instructive question. Now, how about when a parent has done their possible best? They have uh, maybe they prayed, they tried to show them example, everything, and you are, as these children are growing or they have grown. You notice that uh, it seems that they're going the other way, the contrary way. All the seeds you think you have sown, maybe you thought that you sowed tomato, but what you are looking now is, uh, I don't know, is something altogether that is very different. Uh, you know, something um, happened yesterday, and uh, we had to draw some conclusion. You know, we were talking to, we had cause to talk to a, a young man who had, uh, whose parents are pastors. And uh, we said, so we were asking him a couple of questions. He said, well, there's nothing you're asking me that my parents did not ask me. He said, well, when my parents, when my mom saw me after, she said, first of all, she said, Jesus. And you know, when an African man is, you know, then she said, Jesus. You know? But you see, I now, you know, I was able to read in between the lines. A lot of times when life-defining um, circumstances happen to our children, we don't pick it up. If you are not operating the Holy Spirit, I don't care whether you spend your 24 hours in prayer, you don't do anything else. The Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. I remember I used to tell John that is up there. I said, there's nothing you do that the Holy Spirit will not tell me. I said, do, try it. The Holy Spirit will tell me. I said, I will know. When you, I mean, so after a while, he too, he gave up. Because he realized that truly, truly, as I told him, the Holy Spirit will tell me. Sometimes life-defining things happen to our children and we didn't pick it up. We didn't step in at the right moment. I realized that this young man, they had, they had some grief in the family. You understand? They had some painful deaths in the family. And at that point, they didn't help him to address the grief. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look, if you remember the video that we saw, that lady too had some things that had happened to her. The grief was in a different dimension. Maybe some bad relationships, some bad decisions, and it was not properly processed. These children have gone to school. It may be as even as little as bullying. Because another child, the bullying is like water off a dock. They don't care. But you have another child that is very sensitive. Are you getting what I'm saying? And you were so busy, you didn't process it. If the first thing we are is a parent. Every other thing lines up behind it. That money, everything lines up. I mean, and we come back, we are so tired. We are so exhausted. You just want to go to bed. And you don't want them to disturb you. Go and eat and please shut up and let me rest. It's not the way, it doesn't work that way. I think that is a major thing. Things happen that you didn't pick up on at the right time. There was a time when he was also in middle school, those kind of ages that, look, we were, we were on his case. And some of us, we keep quiet when we should not be quiet. They say a closed mouth is a closed destiny. I don't know how they say it. You know that this child, you caught him watching pornography. Instead of it to say, look, it's not just about your prayer. You don't have to come to Pastor Teko, but if you think somebody in priest assembly will know your secret, he is not the only pastor in the world. Go to somebody and say, please, this child is watching pornography. Help me. I don't know if I'm communicating. But you have to be sensitive in the spirit, please. 
It's not just about the fact that you pray. You can pray, 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 and pray, and the prayer will go nowhere. Because it takes more than prayer. When that child was going through that strategic situation, that is when you should have been there to nip the matter in the board. To say, look, even though this is... And you see, I could see in the young man we were talking to that, look, the boy, the young man could not marry the fact that these parents have been faithfully serving God and the painful deaths. He had questions that were not answered. And sometimes you may not even have an answer to the question. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it's perfectly okay to say, look, I don't have what? I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. We just leave this with God and we trust him. That is enough. Than to let this person, they will not process it the wrong way. And say, God, you're in a witness box. And you can't put God in a witness box. If God killed you and the person that died, what will you do? Praise God. So let me also try to see if I can say something to the question of our brother who was talking about people coming to church. You see, sometimes as human beings, we always try to, I mean, I, I, there was something David said. He said, I don't exercise myself in things that are too high for me. Please, I want you to believe that that man at the beautiful gate had been there before that day. Because the Bible said they used to bring him. Is that not what the Bible says? At the beauty- so I believe that even Jesus must have passed through that gate and he didn't heal that man. Because he was the entrance to of what? To the temple. Now Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of what? Of prayer. And they met this man who had been there. I believe in the days of Jesus, he had been there. The Bible says he was about 40 years old. So you see, there are so many dynamics. Sometimes it may be the heart of the people is not ready. It doesn't mean that God will never heal the lame man. Imagine if they say, oh, Jesus passed through this gate. He didn't heal the man. It could that not be a valid question? We can't say, you know, this man may not even be ready to be encountered. It may be that maybe you are trying to say the people in the church didn't prepare well. It could also be true. But it doesn't mean, I mean, there are so many things that, you can, I mean, the dynamics are, are endless. Praise God. So we just do our best and we do what? We leave the rest. God is still going to encounter them. Because they came to church, God, will, it may not look like they were encountered, but they will yet be encountered. It's building up. Praise God. Finally, why are people of the world more powerful is a lie. The Bible says in Matthew 28 verse 18, all oh, Please, they may seem to be, but the word of God is truth. Sanctify us through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Let God be true. Let every man, everything else be what? Be a liar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Everyone's hallelujah is a bit down. Did you enjoy the session? So if you did, please, can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, can we give a round of applause to all the panel? God bless you. Thank you so much. You were wonderful. And thank you so much for all the discussion and everything. So we're going to call on our daddy to round up the session, and then we'll continue the service. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give the Lord a round of applause. Your word, your tongue, your word, and your future. In a very practical way, we've seen how the words we speak, how the words we hear, how they affect us, not only positively, but negatively. We can see the effect not only in the life of our children, but in our own lives. That was a particular situation. A married man and a married woman. And, I mean, there were arguments between the two of them. And one kept on saying, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, not knowing that he was being secretly recorded. And by the time the marriage collapsed, it was the evidence that you are always saying, I, I'm what? I'm done. And of course, you know, in this country, he said, no, I didn't mean it. He said, no, but you kept on saying what? And so the other party too also said he, 
she was what? She was done. So the word we speak, they affect not only the present, they affect the future. They even affect people around us. Many a times we think these words we speak, they are just okay. No, they affect, they have a way of either encouraging or bringing down the spirit of others. We are told of the 10 spies that came. They are just the word they spoke that people began to cry in all their tents. And God said, what? Just for the word spoken by some people and a whole, an entire nation broke down and they were crying because they came back and said, indeed, God said he has given us the land. But we went there. We saw men that looked like giants that in our own self would just look as if we are grasshoppers. And when the people heard that, that we, we saw how tall you are, but if you are now saying you are like a grasshopper, then we are done. It means there is no hope. So the words we speak, they can either bring hope, they can either bring life, or they can bring death. I pray that God will help us to be able to do the right thing in Jesus' name. I want us to be upstanding one more time as we call on God and tell him, Lord, this word that you have heard today, let your word be practical. Let it affect my life positively. Let me speak words that will bring life, not words that will bring death. And for those of us who are parents, you want to ask that God help me to say the right word, to speak the right word into the life of my children. And for those of us who are even here, say that, Lord, the word that I speak to myself, let them produce great things. Lord, I look up to you that I would speak the right word at the right time. And this word will produce in my life every negative word that has affected me thus far, Father, remove from me in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I thank you. I bless your name and I worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Precious Father, we want to thank you. Indeed, we thank you for sending us your word. Your word, Lord, in our life goes a great way in affecting us positively and helping us to be the best that you want us to be. Therefore, Lord, even all these things we have heard today, may they be produce life in our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that by your word we will receive divine visitation in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Shall we please be seated? We want to give our tithe and our offering. Uh, the tithe is just uh, you telling God that I appreciate all you have done in my life. The tithe means you are telling God, I give back to you what actually belongs to you. Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, 10 says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, which is into God's house. And the reason why God is asking us to do so is so that our future can be guaranteed. So that things that look so tight for others will not be tight for us. So that blessing that God has planned for our life will richly be released. I see people live under closed heavens simply because they take what does not belong to them. I'm sure you must have heard about the story of Achan. God actually told them not to take what does not belong. But Achan went, he saw Babylonian garment and so many things he said he saw. He took them and hid them. 
But we knew the effect it had not only on him as a person, his family, and the entire congregation. People began to suffer what they knew nothing about. I keep telling people, when you don't give God the honor that is due to him, you are not the only one that is going to suffer. People very close by. People who, what I call, um, uh, whose life is connected with, all, with yours will equally be affected. And that is why this morning, if you have your tithe, please come forward. And as you proceed, the choir will uh, lead us as we go and take the offering. Shall we please be upstanding as we give our tithe and our offering? Titans, please come forward. just please raise it before the Lord. And I want the offering bags as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for the opportunity we have to give to you. Our tithe, which represents 10% of the income we have received But thank you because we know you are not interested in affecting your people or whatever comes to affect your people negatively. And so, Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity we have to give to you today. Not only our offering, but our tithe. Please accept this tithe from us and this offering in Jesus' name. Father, you said in your word that people who honor you with their substance, you will honor in return. Lord, we ask that you honor your people even as they honor you with this tithe and offering in Jesus' name. I pray especially for those who are giving their tithe that the enemy will not steal your joy in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not labor in vain. Amen. 
No one will replace you. Amen. Your blessing will not be given to another. Amen. The Lord will clothe you with his glory. Amen. Your heavens will continually be opened. Amen. Things will not be tight for you. Amen. God will surprise you. Amen. Your efforts in life, God will make sure that it produces good results in Jesus' name. Amen. Just like the key of David will open great doors of opportunity, I pray for you that these tithes will open great doors of opportunity for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will give you success over failure, Amen. joy over sorrow, Amen. strength over weaknesses. And I'm praying seriously for you that God will honor you with lifting. He will honor you with glory and honor in Jesus' name. You will experience the goodness and mercy of God in this land in Jesus' name. Miracle that will announce you, God will bring it about in your life in Jesus' name. By reason of your giving to God, God will Take away far from you sickness in Jesus' name. Amen. And your miracle will locate you. Amen. You will enjoy every blessing that the presence of God can bring into the life of a man in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. Even for this offering, bless it as well. Amen. Let our joy overflow by reason of the fact that we are here even in your presence, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please drop your tithe, and if you have cast it, God bless you. Shall we please be seated? Praise the Lord. At this time, we just want to acknowledge and appreciate those that are worshiping with us for the first time. So if you are worshiping with us for the first time, please could you just wave your hands to the Lord? We want to acknowledge you, we want to welcome you, we want to appreciate you. Please could you rise up on your feet if you don't mind? very, very welcome. You have even made our Sunday even more special. I really are glad that you joined us today. Please, could you introduce yourself and who invited you? We are Dickin and Mrs. S.B. Taiwo from Abuja, Nigeria. We came for Gideon's International Convention in Phoenix, Arizona. So, we decided to come and see our spiritual daughter and the family. And they invited us. Hallelujah. The Wakwas. Thank Mr. and Mrs. Wakwa. They are our hosts. They invited us today. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my name is Christian Wakwa. I uh, am my wife and my mom. We they came last Sunday. I was not around, so I was supposed to be here last Sunday. So today is my first Sunday. So I'll say they invited me. <laughs> but we, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, can we stretch your hand towards them? If they made your Sunday better, stretch your hand towards them and say, Lord, bless them with a first time present. Oh, one more. I apologize. I apologize. Who's the other person? I said there's one more. Okay, so please, can we stretch our hands towards them? And just ask the Lord to bless them. Bless our mommy and daddy that came for the Gideon's conference. Bless our brother. Lord, give them peace. Because this is peace assembly. Multiply peace unto them. 
anything they left behind as a concern, before they get back home, it would have become a testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We bless you because you will encounter them afresh. You will reveal yourself to them. And Lord, you will make them indeed know that they came to peace assembly today and encounter the God of peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. So our announcements uh, are as follows. On Sundays we meet like this, 9 o'clock at the workers' meeting, 9.30 for Sunday school. And you don't want to miss Sunday school because we get so blessed. Hallelujah. I said we get so blessed at the Sunday school. How many people agree with me? That we get so blessed. Hallelujah. Let me see you wave your hands to Jesus. That we're really getting so blessed at the Sunday school. If you are missing it, you are missing it, Lord. Is that not true? Let me see you wave your hands to Jesus. So please come on time. Don't throw the treasure away into the ocean, as they say. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. And at 10 o'clock, we have the worship service. And there's no time you come that the God of heaven will not encounter you. You know, when we come to church, it's not just that we come uh, to meet with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We come to encounter the blood of sprinkling. We come to encounter the ministry of angels. So please make sure you avail yourself of every opportunity to be in the presence of God. And the Lord will keep lifting you from one degree of glory to another in Jesus' name. I said, we'll keep lifting you and me from one degree of glory to another in Jesus' name. Women, please, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Men, can you also shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Okay, so let me quickly, on Mondays we meet for prayer at 9 o'clock. How many of us have been getting blessed by those prayers? Oh, those Monday prayers, I look forward to them. Please, if you have not been joining, please join us. And I'm looking at somebody that I want to be joining us, and she's looking at me too. Hallelujah. She looked away, but she knows that it is her. <laughs> she knows that it is her I'm talking to. Praise God. So every Monday we are there at 9 o'clock and we are so blessed. And our blessings are permanent. God keeps doing new things for us. So if you're a woman, you have not been joining, please join us and the Lord will bless you. He will answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. All those things you have been praying and you have not seen results, as you begin to join us, just use it to test God. You will see what will happen. I said you will see what will happen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Wednesday we are here for Bible study. And Fridays we pray. Uh, this uh, Friday is not the Holy Ghost service because of the convention. So we'll still be online to pray. And uh, the last Sunday of the month is Solution Night. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That hallelujah must be for our pastor. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know one thing about God is that God does not disappoint. And he does not come short. So when you say solution night, when you come, God has to ensure that that program lives up to its name in your life. Regardless of what was done. Amen. So whenever you come for solution nights, God cannot allow you to leave the comfort of your bed, your home, all that you could have been doing. When you come, he has to ensure that it is actually solution night for you. So if you have not been coming, please, I sincerely want to encourage you. Don't miss it. The Lord does great, awesome, mighty, and wonderful things. And he will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The best place you can be in the house of God. You see, one thing I realize as parents is that as we will learn this morning, it's not about so much what you say, it's what you do. Hallelujah. So if you show your children that your uppermost interest is the things of God, is the house of God, they will follow the same suit. And if you show by the example of your life that the things of God are by the way, on the back bench, it is maybe, if you have time, probably they will grow up exactly the same way. And they will always magnify the example that you should. Amen. Our children always do what? They always magnify and multiply the example we should. So if you want to show them God, let them see you putting God as a priority in your life. And they will do more than you have done in Jesus' name. Our children will be greater than us. I said, our children will be greater than us. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you are trusting God for children, it means you are going to have children. Amen. Because it has been spoken over your life that your children will be greater than you. Amen. So you just must have children. And that is going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Announcement for teens. All teens should kindly make it to the overflow for a brief meeting after service. If you're a teenager, please make it to the overflow.
there's blessing waiting for you. Amen. And we have also been told by the food pantry that there are some fresh vegetables that are available for everyone. Atlanta Community Food Bank gave us some fresh vegetables. So please, they want you to come and stop by, or we want you to come on your way out, stop by the pantry and just get something. We don't want to have to, uh, I mean, waste them. So please come and get them. Give them to your neighbors, somebody that you can bless. And the Lord will keep blessing you in Jesus' name. Finally, I said the woman should shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And that hallelujah is on one leg. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout a louder hallelujah. hallelujah. August 17 is the D-Day of a woman of his right hand. Nine strong parishes are coming together in this province for that program. So please, I want you to plan, I want you to prepare, I want you to pray. You know, that day of his power of last year, I'm yet to recover from it. And I know many people that are yet to recover from the blessings of last year. So if you come for this one, you plan to come, you invite someone, for another year, you will still be, I mean, your testimonies will still be ongoing. I said your testimonies will still be ongoing. Remember, we're talking about our words. So if you come, you will invite someone, you pray, you give, you will never be able to recover from what God is going to do. In the name of Jesus. So we are looking forward to seeing you. We'll be talking more with you. Women will be talking to you one-on-one. -on -one, and as you respond, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Awesome service. We thank you for the lessons we learned from the interactive session. We thank you for the wisdom of those who organized it. We thank you for the questions. We thank you for the eye and heart enlightening answers. We thank you for as many you brought into this service today. We thank you for as many you touched today. We thank you for as many you redeemed today. Just go on and thank him 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 for this service. Thank him for the things you will experience this week. Thank him for the supernatural provision for the journey messes to and fro your place of work. Thank him for the health. Thank him for every penny you will spend. Thank him for his presence that is always abiding. Thank him for his grace that is ever sufficient. Thank him for his favor that is unlimited upon your life. Just give him thanks. Thank him for the choir ministration today. Thank him for our sister who led us this morning in the workers meeting. Thank him for everything that we have encountered today. Father, we bless you. Father, we do not take them for granted. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Can we please share the grace? Workers in training, please, uh, let's remember we have our meeting. Workers in training, please don't go away. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. You are good, your mercy is forever.